Ladies and gentlemen, friends, students, comrades, countrymen, we need to talk. In fact, we need to have the talk. This is something that I know that many of you have questions about, you're curious about, maybe you've tried to answer those questions by reading a book or looking up information on the internet. And perhaps that information that you found was confusing or frightening. But don't worry, I'm here to help. Today, I want to have an honest, open conversation with you. Today, let's talk about the standard error of the mean. If you have questions about the standard error of the mean, you're not alone. Many people have these same questions. Like, what is it? And what do I do with it? And is having a big one better than having a small one? These are all questions that many people have about the standard error of the mean. And so in the moments that we have remaining, I want to talk right down to earth in a language that everybody here can easily understand about the standard error of the mean. Let's start in the shallow end of the pool. Let's begin with some things that you already know and then we can ease our way into our discussion. You may recall in our last lecture that we collected data. And to illustrate this, I used a bag of numbers. I reached into that bag and pulled out numbers that represent data. Each of those data points, each of those numbers can be combined, turned into an average, and we now have an average of that sample. That sample average will become a point estimate. It's a mean or an expected value of the data. We will use the mean of a sample to estimate the parameter value for the population, which is the best way to get that estimate. All we have at this point is a single sample for which we can calculate a mean, but also the variance. The variance in a sample tells us something about the spread, how close together or far apart the scores are. There is a trade-off between the mean, the point estimate, and the variability. A point estimate is very precise. When you say the mean is 50, you are making a very precise statement. However, we know that those precise estimates are always wrong. That no matter the sample you choose and how well you choose it, that sample will always deviate somewhat from its population if you take it out to enough decimal places. The mean is precise, but it's not accurate. On the other hand, the variability gives us a measure that is accurate. The mean will be within a certain range. The variability tells us about the spread of the data, how far apart or close together those scores are. When the standard deviation or the variability is large, then the mean is less informative. There's more error around that mean. However, when the standard deviation or variability is small, then all of the scores in that sample are very close to the mean, making that mean a much better predictor that we can use as a point estimator. Having created a mean for a single sample, we then moved on to an experiment using an infinite population in which everyone in class chose their own random sample. And each of those samples had a mean and a standard deviation. What we quickly determined was that using the mean of all of those samples was going to be a much better point estimator than any sample at random. And we also determined that it was very necessary for our samples to all be of the same sample size. That way we could simply average those means to get our point estimator. From there, we used a wooden block to stand in for any given sample mean. And we placed those wooden blocks on a number line. And when we were done stacking up wooden blocks or sample means on that number line, 
we had a distribution of sample means. The distribution of sample means is all samples of a given size that can be drawn from a population. And the average of all of those samples is our best point estimator for a population mean. We also discovered that despite any characteristics of the underlying population, the distribution of sample means from that population is always a normal curve. And let me add that when you hear that phrase, distribution of sample means, it is referring to exactly the same thing as if someone uses the phrase sampling distribution of the means. When we had an individual sample, we could calculate a mean of that sample and the variability around that mean. That variability is called a standard deviation. A standard deviation is the average variability between any raw score and the sample mean that is reasonable to expect simply by chance. And we learned the formula for calculating that standard deviation within a sample. But then we created our distribution of sample means. Not every sample mean was the same. There is variability in those sample means. The variability in the distribution of sample means is the standard error of the mean. What the standard deviation is to a sample, the standard error of the mean is to the distribution of sample means. The standard error of the mean is the average variability between the sample mean and the population mean that is reasonable to expect simply by chance. Every sample mean deviates somewhat from its population mean. The average of those sample means is what we are using as our point estimator for the population mean. The difference between any given sample mean and the population mean that occurs by chance is our standard error of the mean. And as the sample size that we use for our samples rises from 30 to 50 to 100 to 1000, the standard error of the mean decreases. There is less error in a larger sample size. Now we can prove that concept to ourselves. We're going to go back to our infinite population, and we're going to select samples of varying sizes. We'll select small samples and calculate the error, larger and larger samples, each time calculating the error. And because of the way that I have structured this Excel data set, we can know what the actual population values are, something that doesn't actually happen in real life, but which does allow us to calculate just how far our estimates are from the true population parameters. Let's go to Microsoft Excel and see what we can learn about the standard error of the mean and sample size.